Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Motor Chaos. This year old Dave. I got on the line a special guest on the line, Nitro Funny Car Driver, Dale Greasy Jr. How you doing, Dale? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. So you ran up there for the Jags All-Star thing in uh, Joliet yesterday, huh? Yeah, everything went good in Joliet. We had a little bit of malfunction first round, but other than that, the car has been running great. So what, what kind of passes did you what kind of passes did you make over there? We ran four eleven three oh nine, and we were on a better one, and we had a wire go bad on one of the shutoff systems. Didn't hurt anything; just shut it off. Uh-huh. Other than that, it was all good. So we went to Topeka, we went to Charlotte, and it's run three O's, three oh nine, three ten, three fifteen, almost every run. Nice. So what what happened to John Forrest yesterday? Yeah, that poor guy's having a terrible year. Because everybody knows he's a great driver. Oh. Something's going wrong there, and they'll get it straightened up. Oh yeah, he's he's a, he's been going at it for years. You know, he's some people are trying to say, oh, he should he should retire. And nah, he 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 should not retire. He's, pe- people are trying to say he's, he's he's had his days now. No, John Forrest is drag racing. If he leaves, we lose we lose our spokesman. So, to me, he's he's the highlight of the show right now. Him personally, and everybody knows he can drive. That's just silly. Yeah. So now, Dale, for you, when you first got into drag racing, how did you get involved with drag racing from your dad? Yeah, I started with my dad, and then a couple of years after that, my brother and I still on our team, and been going ever since. So what what year did you start driving funny cars? 1997. Mm. That's my, Brainerd was my 20th year driving. Wow. Uh, yeah, and you, Joliet was my 100th race to qualify at an NHRA. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I used, to, I, cool. I, I used to watch your dad race years ago when I was like four or five years old. My dad used to take me to Great Lakes Dragway in Wisconsin and uh, US 30 in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, I used to bracket race the US 30. I still own the car that I bracket race the US 30. Really? <laughs> yeah. Bought the car in 1976. It's a 68 Camaro. It's a 10 second car. Had fun with it, but just haven't had time. But the nitro car takes up a lot of time. Yeah. So, so what do you think? If what, if you ever retire from nitro, you think you'll get that car going? I'm hoping. I'm hoping, but I don't have any plans on retiring anytime soon, so yeah. you gonna... hopefully I can keep going. I just look at the Greek and I think, well, heck, he's still doing it. <laughs> yeah, what, what? what is he, like 86 now? <laughs> I ain't older than that, but I'm not 100% sure of the exact age because he doesn't tell you, but he's in his upper 80s and yeah. still going. Yeah, that's what everyone says. We're not sure exactly how old Chris is, but he's up there. Well, I work for Bob Stane, the owner of Strange Engineering. And he knows exactly how old he is, and I don't ask. I just it, to me, he's like an inspiration a guy like that, still doing what we do because it's a lot of work, and they're not easy to drive. So, yeah. you gotta take your hat off to him. What, wasn't he up there at Route sixty six over the weekend? What's that? What, wasn't he up there at Route sixty six on the weekend? Yeah, he made two runs. They had something with the clutch on the first run. And I'm not sure what happened on the second round. It was his first race out, so I'm sure there's only gremlins the first race. But he'll be in Norwalk, so we'll see. Hopefully he does well. Then Don, Don Garlers was out there c- c- cackling his uh, little dragster up there? I can't hardly hear you, bud. I said Don Garlers was up there with his little dragster? Yeah, he's uh, he's doing good. Um. I'm not sure where he's going next, but I'm going to have to say Norwalk, but never know what the Greek. He might show up in Bristol. So did you see the new Chi-Town Hustler car? Did I see what? Were you able to see the new Chi-Town Hustler car outside? No, I never, once we're there, it's pretty busy, so I really leave the pit. I saw pictures of it, and I'm friends with the family, so it's a pretty cool deal. Because that guy, that guy was one of the innovators of the sport, so... Too bad, but the kids are keeping it going. Yeah, Mike. Mike was saying his grandpa kind of had a hand in that 
design before he passed away? Oh, sure. And Mike's dad, Wayne, Danny, Mike's brother works on it. So, I mean, they're, they're all involved in it. So now for you, Dale, when you started driving funny cars all these years ago, what, what was it like to get behind the wheel for the first time of a nitro funny car? It was, uh, you think you know by watching them and you have no idea. Cars are so fast. And it was, it was a learning curve. It took a while, but it's, uh, right now, it's one of the coolest things I think you can do. So that's why I keep doing it. So, so now the, the funny car that you're currently running, how many years have you been running? Have you been running this car? This is two years old. I got it from Don Schumacher Racing. I had crashed my car testing at Joliet one year, and they hooked me up with a new car. Hmm. Yeah, right. and it's, it's a good car. I mean, it's, had I known how much better they were, I should have gotten one sooner because it just it made the performance so much better. Now with this. This car, what's been the quickest time you've had with this car? 403. Yeah, it went 403, and the fastest we've gone is 315. Now, you you had a real big accident. What year was that, 2009 or something like that? 2008. Yeah, broke both of my legs. 13 surgeries, and a year later, I was back in the car. Yeah. That's... That's great that you can, uh, you know, get go through something like that and get right back in the driver's seat again. Yeah, that was the carrot hanging out there for me to get better. Because I knew I could get back in my car, and that's what made me work for it. So now, besides your dad, Dale Sr., who else, who else was uh, inspirational to you back years ago? Uh, Gary Bolger, because he drove for my dad before I did. It taught me a lot, Gary Dunsham. He's he's a friend of mine, and he's been racing longer than I have. And he'd always give me ideas or things that I should be doing because he already tried it. And some of the things I was doing were not exactly right, so he straightened me out. So now, for your funny car, when you when you go out, how many crew members do you have, and who are your crew members? We have seven, seven including my son, myself, my date. Yeah, they're a good group of guys. My brother's my crew chief. He's been with me forever. And my nephew does one head. And the four guys from Indiana are from Ohio. Oh, Jimmy Vance used to work for Scusa. Don Scusa. And he's working with us now. That's good. So h- how many sponsors do you currently have for the car? We have two major ones. It's uh, Tech Pack and Beaver Shredding. Beaver Shredding is a document shredding company, and Tech Pack is thermal forming, plastics molds. But Tony, the owner of Tech Pack, he's been with me for 23 years. Wow. Uh, he's, uh, he keeps us going. Between the two of them, they keep the wheels turning. And there's a lot of associate sponsors, ParksWise, ARP, TX7, you know, Pell Pro Champion help us out. There's quite a few of them. Yeah. And everything we get that I don't have to buy saves us money. Oh yeah, it's it's not uh, cheap running a nitro car. <laughs> no, no, but you know that going in. So that's why we pick and choose races, and we try to skip runs when we can possibly can do that, just to save a little money so we can keep going. Right. So now, Dale, what what are some of your favorite tracks to run on? What's that? What are some of your favorite tracks to race on? Uh. Actually, Vegas was my favorite track. I don't know why. It just It's kind of uphill at the end. But I haven't met a racetrack I didn't like. Is that the four-wide four track? Yeah, it is now. It just started this year. But when it first opened, we were there for an outdoor event. Just a nice place. Charlotte's nice. Bruton Strip does a nice job on the racetrack. All the other tracks are good. You know, it's just when they're new... There's newer stuff, you know, different design, and it's just everybody learns from the past, and they just make it better. Yep. So, so what? What? What's your opinion on the four four wide deal? I love it. I ain't the only driver in the world that loves it, but I think it's cool lining up against three other nitro cars. As a, as a fan, I I'm on the fence because I can't keep track of two, much less four. But. For racing, for me driving, I think it's I think it's cool as heck. 
No, the the funny car you're currently driving. What uh, kind of car? What kind? Of, what make is it? You know, what is it a Buick, Chevy? It's what a is Dodge. it? Dodge. Dodge Charger. Yeah, the, the 2014 Dodge Charger that they ran for our house, know, and then I got it. It's a perfect shape. It's just you know they had newer stuff coming out, so they let me have that one. So how how big of a fuel pump you got in that thing? How big a what? Fuel pump. Oh, 110, 110 gallons. Yeah, wait, 108 to 110. It's uh, we had a 103 and it wasn't big enough, so we put the 110 on it. And it just makes the car safer because they run so hard now. They need lots and lots of fuel. So, so do you ever do you ever think the NHRA drivers will go back to the old long smoky burnouts? Yeah, you can't. They'll run out of gas. I mean, they, we have we had an 18 gallon tank in it last year, and it was barely enough. And we have a 20 gallon tank now, and it probably has two to three gallons left in it after a run. And the burnout in the back of it is where it burns a lot of the fuel. I think it's cool to do that. We used to do that match races, but with these big pumps, you can't do it. It'll run out of gas. Right. So now, Route 66. Would you would you consider Route 66 one of your favorite tracks too? Yeah, no, that's home. I mean, I, I live 35 miles from that track. When they built it, it was the first stadium design track, and I mean, it's a nice track. Surf is good, shut off real long, and it's uh, it's a good facility. So now, when you first started uh, driving funny cars, did you ever run a Great Lakes driveway? Not in my funny car. I have bracket raced up there, and I've gone up there with my dad when Gary Bowles was racing, but I haven't been up there in our car. So but they invited us, we'd come. Right. So now, Dale, what, what would you consider to be uh, some of the milestones of your drag racing career? Well, um, first was just getting my license. You know, you got to make six runs, and if, like I said, if you've never you've never driven one, you just you can't fathom how fast they are. And you know, qualifying. We ran IHRA for a couple of years and won two world championships, and that was probably the highlight because we, we did really well for those couple of years. And the third year, I got hurt. And when I got hurt, it was like the fourth or fifth race, and we already had a 200 point lead. But wasn't to be. Yeah. Yeah, going back to Great Lakes, I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see you run a Great Lakes driveway. I mean, Great Lake Dragway is like uh, about 35 minutes from where we live at, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a couple hours for us, but it's not a bad drive. Because yeah. that was one of the local match race tracks, and I even bracket raced my Camaro up there a couple times. But we stayed, like, used to call it Rockford, now it's Byron. Right. And US 30 and Martin, and wherever they were racing, we were there. How about Cordova? I went there a couple times. Uh, we we run the World Series there every year. I never bracket raced there because there was tracks a lot closer. But I like the facility. The guys that took it over, the track's surface, they have done a great job prepping it. Last year we ran 420 there, and it could have took a 4-0. Hmm. I mean, the track was that good. So It's always been a nice place, but they, they really did a lot of work at the track, and it's gotten a lot better. So will you be running at the World Series this year? Yeah, we'll be there. That's Jack Wyatt. I know there's other cars, but those are the only two that I know of. Um, so let, let me ask you a few fun questions now before we finish this interview. You have you have any hobbies outside of drag racing? Not really. I uh, I work on uh, old cars for Bob Stangy with the Lincolns and T Birds, and I enjoy the work I do. So I. Don't have time for anything else. Okay. Um, so, so Dale, if, if someone were to give you two hundred million dollars and uh, ask you to build a new drag race track, where would you think about building building this new track, and what kind of features would you want to put into it? I, I, I don't know because uh, I, I I would like to build it close to my house, so it's easy to get to. But that would interfere with Route sixty six, but. I don't. I don't know that there's anything I would change on some of those. So one of the tracks, Denver, has a cooling system running through the tracks, so when it's hot out, right. track surfaces better. Yeah, I heard about that. You know, that. that's 
that's a good feature. But, you know, being in, if you're in the Chicago area with all the cold weather, I don't even know if that's possible, you know, for something like that. But they have made a lot. NHRA has made tons of improvements on the racetracks in the last 20 years, and I have no complaints. So now, with all these years of driving a funny car, do you, do you, do you have a greatest competitor? Do I have what? A greatest competitor. Oh, I like them all. Whenever we pull up there, you know, a lot of guys will say, you know, I hate the guy next to me. I don't. I, I don't even pay attention to the guy next to me because if you're thinking about him, you're not doing your job. But, I mean, racing John Force to me is cool because that's the first guy I ever raced to a like, oh, right. I'm in 97 at Indy. Got to run him first round, and to me, that was just cool as hell. So, to be able to race with and against. I raced, I drove a top field road trip for a while, and I, I raced the Greek. And to me, that was just a highlight. How'd, how'd you do against the Greek? We beat him. <laughs> how, yeah. how about how about Force? He is uh, probably 16 or 18 to 3. He's beat me. He beat me like 16 times in a row, and I beat him three in a row. And I walked up to him, and I said, I'm catching you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one guy that has helped me throughout my career with parts and things that I needed. He's definitely been good. Because the crew chief on Courtney's car, Danny Hood, he started with us. His dad worked with us. So, I mean, there's a connection there. It's like, like another racing family. And, but John, even before that, John always, if we needed something, he took care of it. Now, do you ever get any uh, any advice from John? Sure. Everybody gives advice. It's just, at this point in my career, I've done it long enough that, you know, if they see something wrong, they'll tell me, but they usually don't say much. Hmm. I don't think they, they, don't, they don't want me to get an advantage on them. So now, Dale, if you were able to do it, Time traveling and go back in time. Would would you do anything differently? I don't think so. I think ever since we started our own car, and I had worked a job for thirty years, and I quit the job and started racing full time, and that's what made the difference because we were paying attention to the car. And I'm pretty happy with everything we've done. So, what what's your favorite food to eat? Uh. Uh, I'm going to have to say probably fried chicken, but there's just a couple places that it's better than others. There's local places by our house, and I love popcorn, and I'm a snacker, so any kind of cookies and chocolate and cake, and but not, shouldn't, but I do. But not at the track, though, right? you got to try to stay in shape when you're racing. <laughs> yeah, I don't eat much at the track. We eat breakfast, but it's just there's, you're going so you're full blast for eight hours so by the time I get down I'm ready to go to bed <laughs> so usually, usually race weekends I eat breakfast and that's about it so what's your favorite beverage I'm going to have to say probably in the evening would be a Coors Light now do you have a favorite movie of all time uh, Shawshank Redemption that's a good for one. some reason I just like that movie yeah, that's a good movie so, so what, what's your favorite music to listen to? What's what? What's your favorite music to listen to? You know, I rarely ever turn on the radio because we're writing, writing notes and thinking, but I like, like, like 80s rock, you know, the old rock and roll. But right. listen to some country music, but in the last five or ten years, I just I don't listen to music that much. So now, Dale, if you were if you were in drag racing, what do you think you'd be doing with your life right now? I don't know. <laughs> Never even thought about it. This is what I wanted to do when I graduated from high school. A vocational class. The teacher had you write a note to yourself: What do you want to be in ten years? And I wanted to be a certified auto mechanic because I knew I had to have a job, and I wanted to be a funny car driver. So here we are. So now, Dale, what would you consider to be the fondest memory of your drag racing career? Probably the first win. We won in Grand Bend, Canada, and a good friend of ours, Bobby Logano, won his first race on the same day. So that was probably 
one of the fondest memories that I have because it was just the two of us had grown up together and he won his first race and we won ours. So now, what do you think about that that uh, new event they started last year, the Funny Car Chaos? I think it's cool. I, I wish we could do it. He's doing a great job. I mean, that, that guy used to work for us. Chris Graves was, was our tire guy and cleanup guy for two years on the World Championship car. But he, uh, what the way he's doing it, it just it doesn't it, it doesn't pay enough for a big show car. But if if I could swing it, I would go just for him because of all the work he's done to make that happen. Those shows have turned out really big. Yeah. I was watching a live uh, Facebook video from the from the one over the weekend in Amarillo, Texas. They had, they had, they had a good crowd at that one. Yeah. I, mean, the, the kid, I call him a kid, but he, he started, he, he loved photography, so he's got his Max Cackle where he can buy handouts, pictures, you know, they make t-shirts, and they, uh, he started promoting this with his wife, Tara, and He's done a good job. I mean, I, I didn't know it would take off that fast, but the first race they had thirty something funny cars there. Right. Then, then he's got a good sponsor now, the Red, Red Lion Clothing. Yeah. yeah, he's got quite a few associates. I'm not sure which which is you know what level all of them are at, but I know DJ Safety helps them. There's a lot of people that help them. The first race they had, I sent them a hundred dollars for to low ET if they had an A and a B heat. You know, the, the quickest cars than the guys that didn't qualify race for the rest of the morning. Right. And I put up $100 for each class for the quickest loser first round of those classes. Just trying to help them promote it. Yeah, the, the neat, neat thing about that is you could get, the, you could get an ACA guy going, going up against the Nitro guy. Yeah, any, anything goes. Because they're, they're having the one in Havana, Illinois. Right. And I'm trying to figure out a way to get there. Just... It just costs too much to run this thing down the road, so I, I just got to make it's got to be. If I know I'm leaving money when I leave my house, there's really no sense in doing it. Oh, maybe you could just go up there and uh, and hang out at least or something. Maybe, yeah, because I put it on my schedule and told my guys about it. How excited! But it's nothing he's doing wrong. It's just it just requires more than that to run a car. Right. Yeah, you can, you know, you can maybe hang out out there and hang out with John Hale and all them guys. Oh yeah, well Chris, Chris been a buddy of mine for years, so I go hang out with him and his wife. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it's just going to grow bigger and bigger, and like next year, I think he's going to get more tracks. Oh, he'll, he'll. It's as far as he wants to take it right now, because everywhere he goes or he's taking it, the show's been tremendous. So if he if he wants to pursue it to be bigger, it'll get bigger. Cause, I mean, he's determined. So just look what he's done in the last two years. Right. So now, if if people that are listening to the interview right now want to find out all the events you're going to be at, what's the best way for them to find all your events? Yeah, I don't have anything posted, but we're going to run Norwalk, the Norwalk race in a couple of weeks, and then we go to Cayuga, Canada, for uh, right around the 4th of July. And then August, we run Norwalk by a fire match race, Brainerd and Cordova. World Series, and then we're going to, we might be going to Martin Funny Car Nationals on September 7th and 8th, and then we will be in St. Louis for our final race of the year. Yeah, I was look, I was looking at that Greasy family page on uh, Facebook, it hasn't been updated in a long time. Yeah, I didn't start that, somebody else did that, if you go, if you just go on my page, Dale Christie Jr., it's, it, I keep stuff on there. The other page I had, somebody was running it, and they just said, it's probably my fault because I haven't kept them updated, but that was a page that somebody else started. Right. Now, do you, do you have any uh, web- websites? No. No. Between racing, working, and working on the race car, I don't have a lot of time for that. It, I used to, and I had somebody doing it, it just ran out of time. Right. So now, Dale, I want to thank you very much for your time to chat with me tonight. Yeah, great for great to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. You, you have any uh, final words you want to say to anybody out there? Just come on, watch us. It doesn't matter what track you're going to, just support drag racing because it's, it's a really cool sport. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question, Dale. How important do you think it is for the kids to come out to watch drag racing? 
I think that's the key because the kids are the future because there's, there's not as many hot rods like we used to build when we were teenagers running around on the streets anymore. It's just it's almost like it's a dying breed and to get kids out there. Whenever I see kids at the racetrack, we put them in our car, take pictures of them, you know, just try to get the kids interested. Yeah. Because eventually we're all going to be old farts and we're going to need the kids to keep going. Oh, yeah. That's why it's good to see the it's good to see more and more junior directors coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that class is, is phenomenal. And they're fast, too. Oh, yeah. I actually, actually, I got an interview with a junior dragster driver uh, Wednesday. No, Thursday. I think Thursday. Okay. You know, you know uh, Michael Hosted? I don't. He's, from don't. Cal- Cal- he's a California. He drives a Nostalgia Nitro Funny Car out there, but his, his daughter drives a junior dragster. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know who that is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know him personally, but I know of him. Because yeah. when Nostalgia guys run, I try to keep track of that. A lot of friends over there that go over there and help tune and some drive. I just let any form of racing is cool to me, especially if it's got nitro in it. Yeah. I, I like the Nostalgia guys because, you know, they, they can still put and put the names on the cars like back in the old days like instead of the big sponsors. Uh. Yeah, you know, and everybody says the good old days, but for me, these are the good old days. You know, I wasn't racing back then. Right. So, you know, and the cars are so much faster now. And they did what they could with what they had. But nowadays, look at the nostalgia class. It started off, you know, guys with little box trainers need to go there. Everybody's got semis and multiple motors. And even that class has, has grown. Yeah. But I think they're cool. John Lawson's got two of them out of the strong rooms on Joliet. And they're outlaw nostalgia cars. And they were 520s. Yeah. They're they... fast. I, I, I test drove one for them. and five thirty. 230 miles an hour. And yeah, they they get they got those big pumps in there too to pump out big big flames. They're bigger pump and they got a bigger mag. But they you know they they're not running the nostalgia in any train nostalgia circuit. It's just match racing and he's got two cars and he does good with them. They're fast. Yeah, they call those the t- Tom Motri header flames. Yeah, same thing. Motri's the one that got the, the combination set up. The lost used to run against Motors Jurassic Plastic, and then John built another car, so he runs against him and works himself in with the two cars. Yeah. The quick quick draw and uh, runaway. Yeah. Joe, yeah. T- Joe Hop. Got beautiful cars. He paints all my race cars. That guy does a phenomenal job painting. Yeah. Have you ever seen his operation? I don't think there's any dirt anywhere. Now did, he keeps everything beautiful. Now, didn't John just uh, drive Dale Worsham's car out at Joliet. He did. He made a run out there. He was, uh, Del needed one to drive it, and John needed to keep his big show license updated. So they went out and made a run or two, and, you know, everybody was happy because then Del got paid for his 17, 18 money has gone up, and he's raised that. Uh-huh. And it has got more cars to the racetrack, so it definitely is working. Because if you don't qualify, it used to be on like three grand, and now you're getting 7,500. Well, it's worth going. Right. So when they came up with that, I thought it was a good idea. Yeah. Well, Dale, like I said, thanks again for your time to do this interview tonight. All right, James, call me anytime. Yeah, we'll do another one in the future. Okay. You have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.